everyone. Welcome back to Window Chats with Robin, the Instagram live podcast where I sit by my window and chat with very interesting people. We are entering season three, very exciting, and today's guest is Sophie Ann Rooney. What a treat. And we will be discussing things like the raw holiday party, and she's here. I'm going to invite her in. Oh my gosh, here we go. I have faith in it working. I feel like season three, new start, let's do this. We'll find out. I hope my connection is important. Oh my God, it worked right away. Sophie, this never happens. <laughs> this is thrilling. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Excited to have you on the show. Thanks I'm for coming. I'm excited to you. You're welcome. You look like great. A... Oh, thank you. I like the stylish hat. Right? It's the love bot, graffiti artist, Toronto. Represent. Look at you. We've got to mm -hmm. tag everyone. Always, <laughs> no, you just like always know these people to tag. I love it. Uh, so we have a lot to discuss today uh, in a very short amount of time because season three is going to be 30 minutes. I've decided it's happening. So I wanted to start talking. Oh, wait, I want to do your bio first. Do you mind? Can I show sure, your bio? Okay. Yeah. I wanted to have you here because as I was trying to read your bio and practicing, I can't pronounce the French schools that you've trained at. So you will walk me through that instead of me butchering it. It's going to be fun. Okay. So Sophie Ann Rooney, below, is a director, CEO, and raw coach, 20 years experience, born in France, currently residing in Toronto, Canada, for those that don't know. <laughs> now, her training includes, okay, the International Film School of Paris Ecar? Ecar, yeah. Ecar. Okay. Yeah. Ecar. <laughs> That's good. A okay. Atelier de, okay. Atelier de Blanche Chalon. Very good. Okay. Lee Strasberg's protege, Amy Werba. Mm -hmm. I feel like that should have been easier that I made it sound. <laughs> Valerie Landsberg, Central School of Speech and Drama, and the Oxford School of Speech and Drama. A lot of speech and drama. Impressive. Now, your credits include directing and casting Netflix animation series, Daniel Spellbound. Hot off the wheels is working as a lead voice director on the AAA game Assassin's Creed Odyssey rated 30th in the top 100 games of the decade by Polygon, BAFTA nominated and nominated video game awards for game of the year 2018. And Sophie has a TV series in development under NDA <laughs> and is said to be directing a feature in 2022. And Sophie has also directed several multilingual voice, multilingual, that sounded weird, multilingual, <laughs> multilingual, many languages, voice commercial spots in English, French, Spanish, Italian, German, Portuguese, and Japanese. It sounds Her impressive. Films, Who's this it person? sounds very impressive, right? <laughs> and these films, okay, your films have traveled the festival circuit, garnering awards and recognition. One of Toronto's top acting coaches. Her actors are the most booked actors in the city. I love that loaded statement. I want to bring on other coaches, like battle it out. Who's winning? But, okay. <laughs> So it's very impressive and so grateful to have you here. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you for that. That was wonderful. It's your kind of like a flash, flash of all my life up until this point. It was just kind of crazy. So like, boop, 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 boop. And now we're here. <laughs> well, you know, I find it so hard when I say to someone, okay, tell us about yourself. So I'm like, I'm just going to read this and you're just going to take it all in and go, yes, I did do that. I just accolade. Nope. Uh oh, are my bars going? Did I lose you? I mean, I, I still see you. Okay, yeah, thumbs up. I mean, I'll just talk in between. There's like a 50% a chance it works every time and the odds keep me going. Mm -hmm. But one of the main reasons that Sophie is on this show right now is because we have a raw holiday party coming up. I'm very excited to talk about this. Uh, I wrote down the sponsors so I don't forget because my memory is not good these days. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Ra, uh, okay, Here's, is it Rooney Actors Workshop? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, Sophie has been doing a lot of stuff on Zoom, but now in-person classes, right? I know you don't like to promote yourself, so I'm promoting you because that's <laughs> what I do. Okay. Yeah. It's been, a, it's been great to be back in the room with people and, and, you know, have that interaction and get people's artistry back on, like, track and flourishing and in person. Yeah. But it was great being online too. Online, like people leveled up incredibly, you know, being able to be in a, 
you know, basically a medium close up and, and figuring out how to be dynamic within the Zoom auditions, especially in taping, which is going to probably continue on as the years progress, because it's such an easy way for actors to feel safe to put out really good product. It's so, true. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. At first you think, oh, Zoom. And then you go, well, if I'm doing a self tape anyways, Zoom classes make sense. Yeah, that's what I mean by product. I mean, not so much the acting and obviously you want to connect to story and bring characters, but in terms of like, you know, making sure that you, when you are on, online, that you're either hotspotting your phone so that you're getting crisp, you know, um, uh, feed so that it never drops so that you can always have it technically sound and, you know, the lighting to, you know, uh, loads of different things that you can add in terms of microphones and so on, just to keep that really you know, um, a contender in the world. And it can be done quite cheaply too if you have really good natural light in your home, right? So there's, uh, there's, there's good things happening. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I love, you always have a positive outlook. I love it. <laughs> uh, I keep getting distracted. I'm like, okay, let's promote the holiday party. We're gonna, yeah. cause it's, it's, it's exciting. For me, it's exciting because I have not met anyone from Raw in person. So like how tall is everyone? I don't know. Do people like match their Zoom face? I would think so, but you never know. So you it's, never know. Right? Okay. But this is happening. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Sunday, December 12th. Yes. I feel like I don't have to specify 2021, but you never know. Maybe someone like books it off next year. But this year, <laughs> Sunday, December 12th, 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. Very, very long night. Past my bedtime. I'll caffeinate. And it's going to be... <laughs> At the, oh my gosh, track and field? Uncommon. Yes, okay. incredible okay. bar. Um, really fantastic. Uh, it's on uh, College. Yeah. You got the address there. It's in, well, you'll I think it's 582 it. College Street, but there I'll still I'll attach the link afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, and be very careful because they did move locations from through the pandemic. So I know that Google Maps was taking people to the wrong location. But if you turn up at the wrong location, it's just literally not too far to walk to. So wherever you end up, you'll have a good time no matter what. So yeah, it's a, a thing that we've been doing now. I've been I've had four different uh, holiday uh, parties. We obviously couldn't do one last year. Um, each one has a theme. I'm sure you're going to get there to that. Uh, oh, no, this we'll year... discuss it right now. The Y2K <laughs> theme. When I heard it was theme, I started freaking out because I'm like, I even just leaving and seeing people was enough. I'm like, now I have to find a costume outfit? I don't know. Y2K? What does that mean to me? Well, I mean, Y2K is the obviously the year 2000s for those who probably didn't live through it, but... Uh, or who were born in year 2000. So a lot of my actors now are born in the year 2000. So that's, that's wild. Um, Y2K, you know, fashion, I mean, like, Google it, you'll, you'll see, you'll see that there's some really cool, creative ways to explore that era of, uh, of fashion and of artistic style. And that's the main thing. I mean, the person who comes the best dressed each year gets a prize, uh, depending on what, what it is, each year has been different. Um, but you know, the first year we did, I think right out the gate, we did 1980s. So went eighties themed and then we went, uh, we did nineties, we did the nineties. So we covered those decades. And then we went, you know, last, the last one we had, which was, you know, giant success, really everyone had a lot of fun, which was studio 54. Uh, we had DJ D rock. Uh, he's traveled every single one. Derek Gilroy, for those who don't know, incredible artist, incredible actor, incredible, incredible connector. He's a connector of people. Um, and uh, so Derek Gilroy's the uh, the DJ, and he he's done you know uh, DJ uh, tiff parties and stuff like that. So seasoned at what he does, he gets everyone moving. That, that's for sure. It's one that you coming come with comfortable shoes so that you can dance the night away and just relax and and enjoy your successes basically. Uh, of the year and, and then project into the new year, manifest good things and, and embark on, you know, idea of community breeds, uh, revolution in arts. Uh, if you think back to the Impressionist movement, you know, all those, you know, wildcats, you know, uh, Monet, Manet, Pizarro, Cezanne, uh, yeah, Beth Morisot, who's a female um, impressionist um, artist, they were all friends. They all collaborated together. They all challenged each other and had critical minds and came out with really great movement in art. And so that's kind of what's happening in Toronto. Everybody's doing really great work thanks to places like the Toronto Monologue Slam. So Toronto Monologue Slam is one of the, the sponsors. Yeah. Uh, Andre and Olanike. Olanike will always be my Lady M. Uh, awesome. What a, but, you know, 
fucking phenomenal yeah. uh, actor, uh, a creator, storyteller, like really solid human being. I love her to the moon and back and everywhere in between, like fantastic person. They've come on board as sponsors. So Toronto Monologue Slam, Monologue Slam Canada, actually. So we're so fortunate to have them on board. So I feel like it's, it's not a raw party. It's like everybody, it's a community party. And so with Toronto Monologue Slam, uh, and and BDB Productions, which, you know, we've got incredible um, filmmakers, artists that are part of BDB. Um, can I list them? Yeah, no, go I'm for talking it. a lot right now. No, I think <laughs> you're promoting the party. You do you. Yeah, man. I just want to promote the party. Just say, if you want to come, you know, let loose and have fun and, and not worry about, you know, the industry side of things, the business side of things, and just be a bunch of artists, like, collaborating and chatting even in a night of fun of dancing and connecting with one another I think is really important especially with what we've lived through over the last little bit um but you know we have in BDB Productions incredible um black-led male um production company here in Toronto but I feel like they're worldwide now like they're incredible human beings that's Frank Laval, Leighton, Manny, Adrian, Ryan, and Brandon. Like, if you don't know those guys, like, they are through and through. Like, ah, oh, I love them so much. Um, and uh, they are incredible, and they are all around the world right now. Um, like, Leighton's in the CFC, killing it. Laval's overseas, like, blasting it away in all, like, TV world. And I just, if you check them out, go to their website, you know, keep an eye on them. If there are any like major investors in, in, the, in the Toronto scene or in Canada, look to that group of individuals who are ready to work and who bring inspiring content to the table every single time without fail. So they are sponsors. So what? You're like, what? These two incredible people, uh, organizations and groups are part of uh, the, the party. And that's why it's not, it's not a rural party. It's a rural, it's a heavy emphasis on, it's an artist party and it's here to have fun. And we've got last one. I know I'm talking the hell of a lot. I want, no, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> have to go for that. Um, I think every sponsor, like what you were saying, this community that's being built from everyone connecting. I love it. Yeah, right? Yeah. And like, then we've got this brand new like self tape studio that uh, popped up through the pandemic. Uh, who I actually I zoom into sometimes to, to do coaches. So virtually, um, if like my schedule is too jam packed, like it's really easy to do. Self tapes in the six, Google that, find them. Website it's Chase. Chase runs uh, the a really great, and I think his booking ratio is through the roof. So they have incredible lighting, incredible like um, you know camera. It's, everything is really solid, and they've established themselves as being really, really um, you know someone who has taken something very small, small business during this time, and, and developed it into things that are now empowering artists around the city. So that self tapes in the six. They are also a sponsor, as well as Derek. Gilroy, DJ D-Rock. <laughs> I love that name. It's so funny. Yeah, he's, he's also on board as a sponsor, and we're so, so fortunate. Uh, and then we've got a special thing, but I'll let you get to the red carpet thing. And um, we have a special sponsor for the I red carpet. It just carpet. seems like a natural segue. We should talk about no, it No, you talk yeah. about it. You say some things right now. You make me laugh all the time, so that, you know. Well, that's a lot of pressure. Okay. <laughs> well, no. Well, that, I, think, I think you just naturally find me funny. Like, I could say anything, and you giggle. And I appreciate that. My best audience. <laughs> Very true. Very yeah, true. It. You're an incredible comedian. If people don't know, if you're logging on right now, <laughs> like, Robin, like, should have her own talk show, for one. And, like, it, be on all the comedies in town. Like, incredible oh individual. God, so really good. smart with her comedy. And, like, it's hard. Like, for me... I go to stand up, I have a hard time sometimes like cracking up and you make me laugh like every few sentences. Yeah. It's great. I, I, like, I like you. <laughs> oh, well, I like you too. Oh, like, I didn't expect that. Well, now yeah, I have to yeah. promote that. Okay, well, for those of you that would like to be interviewed by me, we are having a red carpet event at this holiday party sponsored by Brad McRae. Uh, real estate agent in Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, like, really, I, I just love, I was looking at everyone's profile. I love everyone's profile. Just like, you should, fun yeah, 100, fun and group. talk about, yeah. like, fun group. Like, Brad, real estate agent, again, like, a powerhouse. Like, I, it's, uh, good people around, man. Like, this is a good, you know, group of individuals coming together just to, to unite and, and bring, you know, the work forwards into the new year. And 
Brad McRae, he is uh, an incredible real estate agent. If ever you're looking to buy a home, there are ways. Like actors always come up to me and be like, oh, I've got this nest egg. I've brought this money in. And, you know, I don't know quite what to do with it. And if you sit with the right people, they'll give you the right advice. And they can even prepare you now for in like a year's time or two years time when you're ready to pull that trigger and go into real estate. I think it's really important to build your portfolio as an, as an artist, um, especially if you want longevity and want security, if anything should happen, that you've got those things to kind of lean on. And so having a realtor kind of swoop in and be like, I'll sponsor your red carpet. Um, so that's really exciting. So we have a red carpet. We have a, a photo section area where you guys can come and you know, do your best, you know, I don't know, uh, impression on the, you know, best pose, uh, strike a pose on that red carpet. I'd like then... the photo booth to be so good that it could be my headshot. That is the caliber of photo booth I would like. I don't know if that's possible. I just really Well, you know, know what? I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I think I, I only just really booked with them really early, so I'm probably misquoting their name. They're Photo Booth Toronto. Uh, to you. they've done Drake parties and things like that. So I, I went a Drake little, I splurged a little. I, I kind of wanted to treat everybody real good. Um, so there's that element. And then once you're done your photo, you go to to Robin here and you get interviewed. Not live streamed. It's a recorded thing, and obviously you'd have say once it is aired. But just to have have a little thing, because again. Lots of people wanting O1 visas, wanting to get into the States and so on, and having like documentation and interviews and you're a legitimate podcaster. Um, so having that being available to actors that I coach and that I've taken into career consults who have that in their mind, having things like this in their you know folders on their computers are really important. So to be interviewed by someone of caliber like you, Robin, who has your own, you know, uh, you're in season three, you said season Three? I am. Yes, this is season three. You're in three. season three. You know, those things go a long way. And so um, having you at the end of the carpet there for them to kind of swoop in, you know, for you to have a back and forth comedic banter with them, no pressure. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I think when people try to be funny, it's not funny. And that's why I don't like to set the ground like it's going to be funny. I think the more real it is, like people don't know how funny they are. You yeah. know, when someone tells me they can't do comedy, like they, I don't know. I find the longer I talk with someone, I think everyone has a little bit of funny in them. I'd say that. I'd say that. I think we're a plethora of things. We are full piano, as Jeremy Irons says. We can play all the keys. It's just accessing them. That's the tough part, right? Yeah. 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 It's going to be fun. I'm excited. I'm very excited. I'm very excited to have you on board. And yeah. You know, um, I'm excited for what it can bring in terms of, you know, through the generations of people who I've worked with, you know, I see them continuously connect, grow, build things, make films, you know, challenge each other, um, you know, go through the thick of it, have, have uh, come out stronger as, as, as artists and, and like loads of people, I could turn on, on Netflix right now or, you know, of the, you know, I came into Canada in 2000 and seven um and so from that moment on like people from when i was in vancouver shout out to vancouver um you know people who were working there and people who were working here in toronto and even some of my people who i was working with in paris are all like you know really incredible <laughs> they're achieving incredible things and it's so fun to see success and people achieving their dreams or running after them but not all not forgetting their their family you know so that, that is the main thing I've noticed is that people are putting family above anything else. And that's what's really cool right now that I'm seeing in people who I have been working with over the last little while. So it's, it's I wanted to like make a joke that has my family spoken to you and they know that I'm prioritizing this over family. There's a, I have, well, a work -life, I have a work life balance issue. I will acknowledge it very much. So. I think with well, the, I think actually this is a really interesting point Robin because I feel like more so now and I've been teaching it in class recently is the fact that through the pandemic everybody has been very um, centric on their own uh, ambitions and goals and that's it and in fact they're forgetting to live you're forgetting to live life you're forgetting to have moments you're forgetting to broaden your knowledge you're forgetting to like look outside of the the social social media stream that's coming at you go watch documentaries go go challenge you know have a critical mind but not be critical you know that kind of thing i think what what has potentially happened as a little side effect of the pandemic is very much everybody's me 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 
and unfortunately success does not come in that in that way so no i haven't spoken to your mum you know or your family i don't but, know uh, i'm more, more than happy to you <laughs> I'm more than happy to oh redirect you into it's that. It's like way. the Jewish guilt. Where is Robin on Hanukkah? I'm sorry, I'm doing an Instagram live. It's a big deal. Oh, okay. happy Hanukkah for, for oh. yesterday, for the first so day. It's, it's eight days, so you can so, fit it so in. So, this is it. Okay. Yeah, I know. So, now again, happy Hanukkah again. <laughs> sorry, my brother who is watching this says he still, they still love me, which is great. Thanks, Ed. Uh, very cute. Oh my gosh. You're incredible. Uh, you're, you're hard not to love. So, you know. Oh, that's, you know what? I just like to say I'm a very talented actor. And, uh, you were. You know, for those, for those dark faces when it's very easy not to love me, I'm shocked that my husband stays with me. So, there you go. <laughs> it's, but you know what? I think that you made a really good point, right? And it's everyone always says be a well rounded actor, right? Instead of being so focused. And I know even you shared that documentary the other day about the bleeding edge and all that stuff and like focusing on your health or even it's just making me want to do more with like my physiotherapy degree and just like how can we share information and like what there's so many things that are important not just you as a person but like how can you help others and like what more can you do and I just like I feel like after we spoke uh, last week I've just been so focused on how can I get information out there that's going to mm -hmm. help others instead of like how can I promote myself which is 100 percent, 100 percent. i think i think the major thing that like i leveled into was documentary i, I have a, a huge passion right now for documentary filmmakers as a filmmaker i'm you know obviously gravitated towards narrative work and live action but more more in that sense of seeing uh the documentaries that are coming out and how in fact you know, when you look at journalists, and my mom was a journalist and editor, book, edit, book, book editor, and you see, um, you know, kind of where the trajectory of press has gone. And then you realize that actually the groundwork of journalists are through documentary filmmakers. I mean, like one of my actors is making a real good impact that I work with. I feel very fortunate to work with him. His name, his name is Yusuf. Um, I'll have to give you the tag on his. He has a podcast helping, you know, the Muslim community and, and, and pushing things uh, to, to the forefront to, to make active change. And I, I think that you know, it makes you think, you know, obviously there's there's a plethora of uh, different documentaries out there that have all different opinions. Um, and that's why I'm saying develop a critical mind versus a, a being critical, you know, in that sense. It's like absorb, take in and be able to have these back and forths and, and figure out what your truth is, what you see the world as being based on all of those things. And it came, comes to one clear thing. Um, I was watching, I've been watching a lot of crime docs like i think a lot of people love like the crime docs and and you know there have been a quite a few that have come out which goes oh my gosh what does this mean about our you know humanity um but the fact that it's there and you're talking and you're watching these interviews and you're watching these people being interviewed and they're detectives and they're recounting so i've watched some in french there's le petit grégory that was one that i watched and then obviously others that i've seen that are more north american based um and uh you notice that every there's a consistent consistent line with detectives that when they're being questioned and they're bringing themselves back to that moment and they're talking about um, disclaimer here sensitive material what I'm going to say by the way um, if you you're sensitive to this please move away um, it will be dealing with obviously crime uh, involvement and so I will mention some things so if you want to jump off you can jump off um, uh, so just disclaimer there. So they were talking about handling remains, right, of young women, and um, yeah. and and you can see in the the person them crumble, and and you can see the push of emotion come up, and there's resistance, obviously, because we're conditioned not to cry, don't be happy, don't be sad, don't be scared, all of this. So that resistance makes us human, and so when you're experiencing that, you're looking at this detective, and I'm like, I don't see that represented on TV and film ever and yet i've seen it in documentaries over and over and over again when it, and they're recounting the how it felt to be dealing with all of this and having the the killer out there and being completely lost not knowing where to go and so mental health is not being discussed on so many different levels and you're saying about content going out there that means something well that's where it starts it starts by also actors researching those documentaries to see human interactions and human behavior so when you do get a stereotypical role that comes your way you're able to put those layers in and bring something that is actually more true to the storytelling and true to empathetic connection right mm -hmm. so those all those things are what fascinate me 
about documentary, not only building my own, you know, what is this world, what are we doing, you know, all that kind of uh, stuff, which is valid, and pushing also, you know, knowing that as we move forwards, we grow, what we knew back then, we you know, we wouldn't, you know, as, as a whole human race, you know, if we knew what we know now, back then, there would be very different things. So we're in a, a movement of great change and great responsibility. And so I feel as though that comes on, on all storytelling platforms. So thank you for mentioning that. Oh, I think so, it's so important, right? though, right? Like, as much <laughs> as I like being funny, I think it's important to know that as you know, like, but as as actors, as artists, we we have so so many platforms available that and, mm -hmm. and many people have shared this with me too that use your platform to to share this kind of information i, I just think it's so important because yeah. like i don't know it's scary because i go well this isn't what i normally do i don't know if i want to will it be well received it's usually not but i still share it anyways <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to hear it i don't care uh i mean i, I, I say you. like look at look at like go to the groundling workers who are doing all the the hard work in my opinion when you look at like communities like we have in toronto like you're not surprised that major artists are coming out and there are great success stories coming out especially if toronto and vancouver um you know but everywhere now in, in the sense of canada but look at the community leaders look at those those individuals keep them keep them knowing what they are doing is fantastic like warren p sonoda he, what he does for for every individual people i've spoken to so many people and he will take the time and and obviously he's incredibly busy um and if he can find the time he will take take a moment to just give you a little word here and there just to keep you happy and organized and keep going you know and he's president of the dgc canada so all these people who are just part of the community who champion and his his wife uh jen you just, they're, they're all here just promoting and like on every different facet where you turn around in Toronto, you're seeing people who are doing the work, making sure that opportunity is had from every direction and being able to be capitalized on and used to then further exactly that, affect the audience, change a little bit of someone's existence, whether through comedy, whether through entertainment or whether through something that is charged with something that's gonna make you think, right? And, and Toronto has, has that in spades. Andre Newell, you know, Olenike from Toronto Monologue Slam, BDB, the work that they do for all of their family, their community. When I say family, it's who you choose to be your family, right? So family over fame, there's a really great Nova Scotian from Halifax, uh, small business. I'm going to drop his words because I wear it all the time. If you've seen me in class or in the studio or on set, I'm wearing his sweater and it says family over fame. If you need that reminder, go, go grab his stuff, support the small business out in, in uh, Halifax. Um, and uh, Cunny, his name is Cunny Ross. And, uh, and if you need that reminder, you wake up every morning, you put it on, you go, okay, always family over fame. And that can be everything. This is family right now, what we're experiencing. <laughs> whoever the 15 people are, or whoever, how many, I don't know, I can't read it. You know um, what, they keep coming and going. Man. It is what it is. Um, <laughs> but no, it's, uh, you've got it. You know what, I don't know if you've seen the comments, but there's a lot of love for you, Sophie. Oh, thank you. No, I don't see the comments. I see them. Oh, classic. You know. <laughs> And I understand that all these things that people will, will you know, obviously, like you said, are going to log on later. You're going to post it up. Is that what you do? What do you do? Uh, what do you do? <laughs> Great question. Well, you can catch us <laughs> afterwards on IGTV, Spotify, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and pretty much all the podcasts, YouTube, and Facebook. You will be able to see it afterwards. Amazing. I've had a great yeah. chat with you. It's been I, fantastic. Yeah, this was, yeah, so great. You're keeping yeah. me on track, too, because I would keep talking to you because I enjoy chatting with you. But no, yeah, this, but is not, this isn't about me, though. This is not what, what, uh, well, I mean, I'm, I want to be able to see everybody and fist bump everyone and, you know, elbow check people and say, hey, you know, at the track and field event, obviously, they follow the Ontario guidelines uh, for coming in, uh, mm -hmm. be safe, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, make sure that you're, you know, comfortable in what you're wearing, what you're doing, where you're going, all of that stuff. But don't forget that there is a world out there waiting for you to be explore and build knowledge on and, uh, and create with if you want it to be there, you know? Yeah, that's it. That's all I have to no, say. No, that's, that's great.
I didn't have to ask you for final words. You were ready. So was it? Wait, well, you, I'm looking at the clock. Three. I'm oh, very no, much like okay. on the I clock. I was too, but I, I usually don't look at it because I get so enthralled with my guests. I'm like, I just want to keep talking. <laughs> but season three, 30 minutes. We did it. Thank you all for joining us. Sophie, always a pleasure. And this was great. Oh, one thing. If you want to come to the party, uh, RSVP on the website, rawactorstudio.com. Rawactorstudio.com. Yeah, Head there. I'll link it to the chat. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. There you go. Already set. Au revoir. Bye. Au revoir tout le monde. Ciao, ciao. Uh, shalom. Okay. International. Bye.